Okay, lovely people, we're gonna play a little game. Get out a glass and fill it with... Eggnog. If you live in Mexico, you might have rompope, or in Germany, Eierlikör. But even if you have nothing like it, just pour yourself a drink that feels a little special. Now here's the one rule of our game. Every time I say eggnog, you take a swig. And since this is an entire video dedicated to the mind-bending origins and downright wacky world of eggnog, I hope you're thirsty. Let's get noggin. For the uninitiated, eggnog is a sweet, creamy beverage made mainly of eggs, milk, sugar, and spices. Yes, it's basically liquid ice cream, but there's more to it, and we're going to talk about that in just a bit. Americans consume eggnog during the holiday season, from Thanksgiving through to Christmas and New Year. Or not, it's a polarizing drink. You either nog or you don't. I am team nog, and I'm not alone. Americans drank 60 million quarts of store-bought eggnog in 2017. Now, before we can dive into what eggnog is, or even what it should be, we have to understand why. Why is this a holiday tradition, and where did it and its wacky name even come from? For that, I'm taking you way back to medieval England. If you were a rich person in medieval England, you likely drank posset, a warm, milky drink mixed with ale or wine and heavily flavored with spices from faraway lands. Things like nutmeg, cardamom, caraway, pepper, spices that had to take a long, dangerous journey to get to your English manor. The drink hung around for centuries, the recipe changing with the tastes of the times. Eggs were added, sherry replaced ale, but it was always a drink of the wealthy. Think about it, the ingredients were really hard to come by and mad expensive. If you served posset, you were saying, yeah, I got shillings. Now, that all changes when posset hops the pond with the colonists. In true American fashion, it gets democratized. It becomes a drink of the common man and it gets a ridiculous new name, eggnog and I'm going to tell you how it got that name right after I tell you about these guys. This is High Lawn Farm. It's a nearly 100-year-old dairy in the Berkshires of Western Massachusetts. And I wanna give a big shout out to them for sponsoring this video. As you know, I'm all about knowing where my food comes from, and that's why I want you to know about High Lawn Farm's eggnog. Their herd of Jersey cows feast on 1,500 acres of green pastures. In the winter, they're fed mostly hay and corn grown right there on their own farm. And just as eggnog traces its roots to England, so does the Jersey cow to the Channel Island of Jersey between England and France. In fact, Hylon can trace the lineage of some of its cows back 15 generations. So what's the deal about Jersey cows? Well, their milk has more protein and more calcium than other top dairy breeds and more fat. Rejoice, because that means it's creamier, which is exactly what you want in your, glasses ready guys, eggnog. Egg and grog, egg and grog in a noggin. No, I'm not speaking elvish. I'm just giving you a quick primer on the evolution of the name eggnog. Stay with me. So English colonists come to America with a taste for posset, and suddenly there's not such a strict socioeconomic hierarchy. Everyone has a cow for milk, everyone has chickens for eggs, and by the late 1700s, settlers are making a posset-like beverage in their homes and serving it in taverns. They're making it with local eggs, milk, and cream, plus sugarcane and rum coming up from the Caribbean. Rum from the Caribbean was way cheaper than any spirit imported all the way from Europe. So now we have a distinctly American drink. It's gotta get a uniquely American name, right? Well, two slang terms eventually converge to form what has to be the most whimsical name in the beverage canon. Here we go. In colonial cities like Boston and New York, colonists called rum grog, and bartenders served that grog in small wooden mugs called noggins. So the drink may have started off being called something like 
egg and grog. Get it? Egg and rum. But if you were a thirsty tavern customer, you may not have had the patience to order a noggin of egg and grog. Or even the sober mind to do it. You may have simply said, Oi, bombin', get me an eggnog. Make it quick. At least that's what some historians suspect. Even though eggnog has evolved into a cold drink, remember, its English ancestor posset was a hot drink, perfect for the winter time. Not just because it warmed up your insides, but because medieval England, of course, didn't have refrigeration. Your milk would spoil way faster in the summertime than in the cold months of winter. By the time posset transformed into eggnog, it was firmly rooted in winter holiday tradition. Just think about it, it's a rich, decadent drink. And if you look at George Washington's personal recipe, it calls for an obscene amount of alcohol. Rum, whiskey, and sherry. This is not an after work Netflix and chill drink. This is heavy stuff. This is a drink for celebratory occasions, such as Christmas. Today, eggnog is a drink we buy from the store and drink fresh, but for most of its history, it was a drink made at home and aged. In fact, America's first president stipulated in his recipe that the nog sit for several days in a cool place, and you can even find traditional recipes as recently as the 1940s that call for an aging process of up to two months. Okay, so my first reaction to this was, ew, Aging, milk, and eggs? Gross. But then I realized why this works. Traditional recipes call for something like 20% alcohol. So any bacterial beasties who would want to feast on the aging dairy wouldn't even have a chance. Alcohol is a natural preservative. Now, if you drink your eggnog like most people, right out of the carton, without alcohol, do not age it. Keep it in the fridge and drink it by the best by date. Okay. How many eggnogs are we at? Oh, this was a terrible idea. Whose idea was this game anyway? I'm so full. Full of Christmas cheer, you mean? Happy noggin, everyone.